time for a vet minute with Revival's Director of Veterinary Services, Dr. Marty Greer. Dr. Greer, the question today is, how can I help all puppies in a litter be born healthy and strong? Some customers call us and they say they've had a litter born with some large and some small and some puppies that are even stillborn, all in the same litter. So why does this happen and what can be done to help prevent it? Well, this is a great question. And it's one that we get asked as often as you do, probably. Uh, I think the first um, and most important uh, answer to that is where the location of the puppy's placenta was in the uterus. And the problem is, unless you do a C-section, you don't really know order. You may know birth order, but they may not necessarily be born in the order that they were located in the uterus. So we'll see puppies that have um, been crowded in between other puppies having smaller placentas and therefore they're smaller. Um, typically the largest puppies are at the ends of the uterine horn. Remember the horn is Y-shaped. And so there's um, the ends by the ovaries. So there's two places up at each ovary, one place at each ovary for them to have a larger puppy and then one closer to the cervix. So as long as the cervix is closed and there's no infection and the puppy is near the cervix or near the ovary, they're likely to be the biggest puppy. So often the biggest puppy is born first and then born last. Some people's perception is that some of the puppies are premature and the other, the other of the puppies are um, fully developed. And actually, that's probably not the case. We think that when a bitch ovulates that all the puppies are developing at the same time. They all start at the same time. So they should all still be the same gestational age. So I think that's a misconception that happens a lot. We can see infections happen in the uterus either from bacteria that ascend up through the cervix and into the puppies that can affect the placental development. We can have the female sick with a systemic disease, a virus or a bacterial infection. Um, that can certainly affect fetal development. I think another really important thing is to have great maternal nutrition so that she's on an appropriate diet we prefer that they're on a performance, a puppy or a pregnancy diet so that the females are getting adequate amounts of nutrition. We don't want them on an all stage diet when they're pregnant because they really need more, more nutrients during that time. We also want mom to stay fit. We don't want her to just lay around the entire time she's pregnant and get kind of sloppy and out of shape. That's not good for development. And I think the last thing that tends to be overlooked is to try to reduce the amount of stress and trauma during the pregnancy. So we don't want her out trucking around too much and we don't want overcrowding and we don't want too many um, other females in the household that may be stressing her out at the time that she's getting ready to have the puppies. I don't think that's good for her emotionally um, or physically to have that happen. So I think um, there are a lot of reasons for this to happen, but the main thing is that we've eliminated that misconception of different gestational ages and realized just like those trees that grow on the sides of the mountains where there's a lot of rock and just a little tiny bit of little dirt and there's this little scraggly tree growing out there on the rock, sometimes that's how those placentas end up uh, developing is they're crowded, they don't have much room to spread out, and those first and last puppies are usually the biggest ones with the crowding in the center causing smaller puppies mid-delivery. Uh, and unless you do a C-section, you don't really know uh, location in the uterus. Hi, if you're watching on YouTube, consider subscribing to the Revival Animal Health YouTube channel. If you have a pet health question, call our pet care pros at this number, and don't miss our other pet health videos.